Once upon a time, there was a crow who, when sitting in a tree, saw down below a delicious piece of gorgonzola cheese. That would be nice for tea, she said. Yes, please. A hungry fox was roaming on the prowl. He'd smelt the cheese and saw the feathery fowl swoop down upon it and with grace and ease scoop up the delicious piece of smelly cheese. Oh, no. He sighed. Now this calls for a plan. I want that cheese and I'll get it if I can. So... In a cunning, cheeky kind of way, he began to offer compliments and say, You beautiful, elegant, graceful, charming bird, with the sweetest song the world has ever heard. Please sing for me and do so at your leisure, for your singing would give me the greatest pleasure. Now her feathers quivered, and the crow was flattered. To be beautiful was all that ever mattered. With her chest puffed out to show that she was proud, she opened up her beak and cawed quite loud. Oh dear, you've dropped your cheese, the fox responded. And with it in his mouth, he then absconded. The crow was shocked to find she'd now no tea. The cause, she knew, was foolish vanity. The moral of this tale is plain to see. Don't fall foul to cunning flattery. Wow! Someone is very lucky to have such a delicious breakfast. Who is going to get it? Hedgehog, crow or owl? Try to guess. The crow is lucky. She gets the cheese for breakfast. What a wonderful day! It's not often that I get delicious cheese as a gift. Who is this? A sly fox who wants the cheese for his breakfast. My dear crow, you look pretty today. What's the secret? Your teeth are sparkling white and sharp. I'm scared. <coughs> I've never seen such lovely eyes like yours. <coughs> Only noble birds like you have a tail-feathered crest. <coughs> what beautiful soft feathers you have. <coughs> Please sing to me in your sweet and gentle voice. <laughs> Silly crow, did you think you have a wonderful voice? Don't trust anyone who flatters you. I'm off to eat now. A lie begins where a truth ends. I was foolish to trust the fox. Now I have nothing to eat. I'll look for something else to eat in the forest. A young hare once boasted how fast he could run. He was agile, long-legged, and out for some fun. So he teased an old tortoise about his slow pace. But the tortoise surprised him and asked for a race. If you think you can beat me, you're out of your mind, jeered the hare, who was really very unkind. Yes, I could win, said the tortoise. Name the time and the place. The hare thought this amusing and laughed in his face. But he agreed to the race and the place it was set. An announcement was made in the Country Gazette. The animals gathered all out for the day. Excitement arose when the race got underway. The hare and the tortoise were set on their marks. The pistol was fired and it shot out some sparks. In a great cloud of dust, the hare ran off at some speed. It was obvious to all he was well in the lead. The tortoise then coughed, wiped the dust from his face, 
then set off quite steadily at a moderate pace. He didn't worry that Hare could run very fast. The test would be whether or not he could last. The Hare, with his racing, had made himself hot. So he stopped under a tree in a cool, shady spot. He thought, why should I rush? I'm certain to win. So he laid down for a rest, fell asleep with a grin. Meanwhile, the old tortoise plodded steadily on, neither stopping nor resting as he went along. He passed by the hare, and then, oh yes indeed, it wasn't hare, but old tortoise who was now in the lead. The crowd saw him and cheered. The noise woke up the hare. To see the race won by tortoise was more than he could bear. He took off in a fury when he realized his fate. But the tortoise was first. He was simply too late. Slow but sure wins the race is the moral of this tale. Take things steadily and moderately and you'll never fail. I'm proud to be fast and light-footed. Those who can't run fast are really unlucky. How do you manage, tortoise? I might be slow, but I'm always on time. You can't be on time if you're slow. Let's have a contest to see who reaches the mountain first. I accept, Hare. Nightingale, can you be the judge? Sure. Please take your places. On your marks, get set, go. Good luck, tortoise. <laughs> Good luck, Hare. Remember, slow but steady wins the race. <laughs> I'm already halfway, but Tortoise is so far behind, I'll take a nap. There are many stones on the road. Shall we remove them so I can walk faster? Let's help Tortoise remove all the stones from the track. Thanks again for your... Thank you. This stone, this stone was a hurdle. The bridge is broken. Can you help her to repair it? We need to find all the wooden parts. Thank you. The bridge is as good as new now. Thanks. You are a great helper. Great. Tortoise is approaching the finish line, but where is Hare? Ah, he is sleeping under the tree. Let's wake him up. What's the matter? While you slept, Tortoise won the race. That's not fair. I was faster. I lost the race because I napped. Discipline matters more than speed in a contest. Tortoise is the winner. I try to be always on time and finish what I've started. A lion was dreaming asleep in his bed when something suddenly awoke him as it ran over his head. Whatever's that? He exclaimed, and he shot out a paw and grabbed a small mouse that he'd not seen before. The lion roared in anger. You woke me as I slept. I shall eat you for supper. Please don't. The mouse wept. King Lion, you are powerful, mighty, and strong. Please don't eat a poor mouse who meant you no wrong. Ha ha ha, laughed the lion. It's true, you are weak. I am strong, as you say. So, I'll let you speak. I am 
am sorry I woke you. Please be kind. Let me go. I may one day repay you. You really don't know. You repay me? The lion laughed. That's a joke. But he let the mouse go, and he gave him a poke, saying, Off you go, little mouse. I don't expect you'll be back at the most. You'd have made me a very small snack. So the mouse bowed in thanks and then went on her way. And the lion never saw her until it happened one day. He was taking his usual stroll in the jungle when a rope trap ensnared him and he got in a tangle. He struggled and struggled, but the ropes only got tighter. It didn't help in this case to be a great fighter. Help! Let me out! Let me free! I'm in pain! But his roaring and crying were to be all in vain, until a small mouse in the bushes pricked up her ears and ran to his aid and swallowed her fears. Remember me, your highness? She found the courage to say. You showed me kindness, and I said that one day I'd repay you, and now I'm really quite sure I can help you. And then, quickly, she started to gnaw away at the ropes until she'd gnawed a big hole, which the lion fell through safely, body and soul. At last, I am free, little mouse, thanks to you. You may be small, but you are honest and true. Your honesty and kindness is where your strength lies. You came to my aid when you heard my cries. The moral is surely, no matter how small, honesty and kindness makes the greatest of all. to wake me up. I'm sorry, Lion. I didn't mean to disturb you. You're brave to disturb the King of Beasts. But I'll gobble you up now. I'm hungry. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Forgive me today, and I'll help you someday. <laughs> A tiny fellow like you helping me run away before I decide to eat you. Thank you, Lion. I will never forget your kindness. I'm hungry. I have to find something to eat. Wow! What luck that I found such a delicious piece of meat. It's a trap! Help! Help! Let me out! I think the mouse might help me. Please help me rescue the lion! Thank you for helping me, mouse. Be good. Expect good. A lion spared my life, and I saved his. Late one summer time, when the corn was golden yellow, a jolly grasshopper jumped by, a cheery, merry fellow. He loved to play his fiddle, and he loved to sing and dance. Amongst the corn, he'd leap and laugh, and hop and play and prance. He had passed his summer days just fiddling, having lots of fun, idling all his time away in the warm, bright summer sun. Then, by chance, one sunny day, he met a working ant, who was clever, wise, industrious, and very diligent. He saw the ant was hard at work, dragging an ear of corn with all his might. 
It was 20 times his size. Such an extraordinary sight. Goodness! chirped the grasshopper. Why not stop with me and play? Why work so hard on such a bright and glorious summer's day? The ant then turned and stopped and looked the grasshopper in the eye. You foolish, silly time waster. I shall tell you why. The sun is shining. Yes, of that I am well aware. But I am gathering in the harvest while the harvest is still there. And I suggest you would be wise to follow my advice. Store some food for winter while the weather is still nice. But surely, said the grasshopper, the winter won't come for a while. To work on such a glorious day is really not my style. The working ant took up his load and with a shaking of his head said, Goodbye. I must prepare for winter and my family must be fed. The grasshopper waved his fiddlestick and ignored the ant's advice. And he hopped away and fiddled while the weather was still nice. But the seasons change, and winter came as it was sure to do. The field was bare and empty, where the golden corn once grew. The ant had stored corn wisely. He had food the winter through. But the grasshopper went hungry. There was nothing he could do. He had ignored the ant's advice, and now it really was too late. You cannot eat fried fiddle. It doesn't make a tasty plate. The moral of this story is, of sound advice, take heed. In times of plenty, save and store in case of future need. Hey, ants! Why are you working when you can have fun in the summer? Poor grasshopper. Work hard if you want to make it through the winter. Are you joking? There's food everywhere, and I can build a house whenever I want. Poor grasshopper. He doesn't know that there'll be no food or shelter in the winter. Hey, why can't you enjoy the summer? Winter is far away. Grasshopper, I hope you'll be fine when winter comes. Ah, oh, it's awesome to enjoy the summer. Grasshopper doesn't want to build a house. Let's help Ant collect wood chips and wheat grains. Thanks. These ears of wheat will taste delicious on New Year's Eve. Thank you. This ear of wheat will last me through December. Thank you. These wood chips will warm my house in the winter. Find a bucket to collect dewdrops, for we need to gather dew now. Yes, this bucket is perfect for gathering dewdrops. The bucket is only half full. We need a bucket full of dewdrops. Good, the bucket is full. I'm ready for the cold winter now. I wish the rain would stop. My wings are wet. Is there a shelter? Poor grasshopper might catch a cold. Let's find him a home. The daisy's petals are wilted. I need to find a better place. This burdock plant is drooping. I can't stay here. This is Ant's house. I won't knock on his door. I should have listened to the ant and prepared for autumn and winter. It's cold and lonely out here. I hope ant will take pity on me. I can't move. Please knock the door for me. What brings you here, dear grasshopper? Please let me in, ant. You were right about preparing for winter. Now you can sing and dance if you wish, but it's a lesson for you. Next winter, take care of yourself. It's cold and low. It's so cold here. It's cold and lonely out here. 